Hi, my name is Emma Sutton and I am a third year medical student at Deakin University. I am the founder of the Med Mentors program and I'm super excited to have the opportunity to talk to you guys today on our new online format. This presentation will be on my slightly longer journey to medical school and what to do if this happens to you. So this is what I thought getting into medical school usually looked like. Many of you will be somewhere in this pathway, either in biomed, nursing, science, art, etc. You've done well enough in high school to get you here at Deakin, so well done. This might be your first few weeks or your last year. Some of you may have already sat the dreaded GAMSAT or were about to take it before it was cancelled this year. And others are thinking of applying for an honours year to see if research is right for them or to boost your GPA for medical school. And this seems to be the natural progression for most students. Only a few years ago, I was in your shoes, about to graduate from Deakin with a biomedical degree. I'd sat and passed the GAMSAT and had put in my application for medicine, but sadly, I didn't get in. I was offered an honours scholarship at Melbourne University and the Royal Women's Hospital to do a project on preeclampsia and fetal growth restriction, so I did that, and then I sat the GAMSAT again and applied for medicine. But I got another EOD, or an email of death as we affectionately call them letting me know again I had not been selected. At this point, I was really heartbroken. I didn't think I was good enough for anything. A lot of people had told me in my life that I was not smart enough to be a doctor, and I was starting to believe them, and I had no idea what I was going to do next. So what should you do if this happens to you? Number one, don't panic. Don't worry if you're not where you want to be yet, because great things take time. Number two, be sad. We mourn the things that we have lost that were important to us. Give yourself time to be upset, but put a time limit on it, because you have way too many awesome adventures ahead of you to be sad for too long. Number three, don't let this be your defining moment for the wrong reasons. The game is not over yet. You are not defined by your greatest failures, but by the strength you use to overcome them. Number four, and the most important, pick yourself up and try again. For me, this meant I needed a huge evaluation of what I wanted, why I wanted it, and how I was going to get it. And number five, I strongly believe that everything in life happens for a reason. I told myself when I didn't get in that this was a sign that I was not yet ready, that there was an opportunity or an experience that I needed to have before I would be accepted, that would shape me into a better version of myself and ultimately closer to the kind of doctor that I aspire to become. Find your why. I cannot emphasise to anybody pursuing medicine enough the importance of knowing exactly what it means to you to become a doctor and why you are doing this. Because knowing your unique reasons for wanting to practice medicine will set you apart during your applications and your interview. The generic answer is, because I want to help people, I like science and I want to be a lifelong learner. But this isn't enough for a medical school admissions team and this isn't enough for you. Because not one step of this incredible journey will be easy and your mental health is going to take a battering. The only thing that will pull you through this is the pursuit that sets your soul on fire. Holding on to that feeling and knowing that this is what you were born to do is all that gets us through. This is a great quote about medical school. Of course it's hard, it's supposed to be hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Hard is what makes it great. So this is my why. I knew without a doubt that this was the only thing I wanted to do with my life. I've always believed that one day there will be a patient that I will meet, and with my particular skills, knowledge and manner, I will be what they need to change their lives for the better, so I keep going for them. I've always tried to immerse myself in jobs and volunteer work that allows me to see what being a doctor and talking to patients is really like, and I was really lucky to find an amazing mentor, a neurosurgeon that I worked with, who kept me so inspired and was so encouraging. He even helped me practice for my med school interviews and bought me my first stethoscope. And finally, I had a really bad experience with a few doctors when I was younger. I had an eating disorder and the first time that I reached out to a GP for help, he told me I was being a silly girl and to eat a sandwich and get over it. At that time, I lost faith in the medical system, but working in hospitals with patients years later and hearing them tell very similar stories continues to inspire me to become the kind of doctor I needed when I was younger and the kind of doctor our community needs now. So you're probably wondering how long did it actually take me to finally get accepted into medical school? So the answer is seven years. 
During that time, I did feel like an absolute failure, but looking back, I realise now that I actually accomplished quite a bit. So here's just a summary of a few of the things that I worked on while I was trying to get into medical school. I sat for the GAMSAT and applied for medical school each year, and each year I received an email of death, but I was not deterred. Every year I had further experiences that only solidified to me that medicine was all I ever wanted, and I would do anything to get there. I studied for the GAMSAT harder every year, I suck out more experiences that would help me evolve into the kind of doctor I aspire to become, and ultimately I created an application and CV that got me into medical school, will help me get into my internship, and have helped set me up to secure a spot in my future specialty program. Medical schools, internship programs, and training programs are all extremely competitive. They look for experiences that demonstrate leadership, teamwork, empathy, problem solving, and commitment to medicine. So at the end of the day, no GAMSAT score, GPA, or Z score is as valuable to you, your career, or yourself as life experience. So was it all worth it? Yes. And do I regret having to wait so long to get into medicine? No. If I got in any sooner, I wouldn't be the person that I am today, and I wouldn't become the doctor that I'm going to be. I am a strong believer that everything happens for a reason. If I were accepted any sooner, then I likely wouldn't have been accepted into my top preference school, which is Deakin. I wouldn't be the, in the incredible cohort of people that I'm in now, and I wouldn't have met my amazing housemates, who in the past intense few years of medical school together have become my best friends that I've ever had, and they will be my friends for life. Kate and Casey, with me in the Red Scrubs, are my bridesmaids for my wedding next year. The experiences I had during my gap years have given me countless opportunities for growth and made me ready for all of the challenges that medicine throws at me now. And I honestly wouldn't change a single part of my journey. So was it all worth it? Yes. And do I regret having to wait so long to get into medicine? No. If I got in any sooner, I wouldn't be the person that I am today and I wouldn't become the doctor that I'm going to be. I'm a strong believer that everything happens for a reason. If I were accepted any sooner, I likely wouldn't have been accepted into my top preference medical school, which is Deakin. I wouldn't be in the incredible cohort of people that I'm in now. And I probably wouldn't have met my amazing housemates who in the past intense few years of medical school together have become the best friends I've ever had. And they'll be my best friends for life. Kate and Casey, with me in their red scrubs, are going to be my bridesmaids at my wedding next year. The experiences I had during my gap years have given me countless opportunities for growth and made me ready for all of the challenges that medicine throws at me now, and I honestly wouldn't change a single part of my journey. If I can give you any advice, it would be to never give up. My favourite quote is, we only truly fail when we stop trying. If you want this and you're willing to work hard, be kind and never give up, then you will get there. Because if I can do it, you can do it. And to leave you with another of my favourite quotes about medicine from one of my favourite books. Don't think I ever spent a minute of any day wondering why I did this work or whether it was worth it. The call to protect life and not merely life but another's identity, it is perhaps not too much to say another's soul, was obvious in its sacredness. If you are a student at Deakin and would like to find yourself a med mentor, who is one of our amazing medical students that's keen to donate some time to help you with your journey to medicine, just let us know, find us on our social media or send us an email. We'd be happy to find you a match. Thanks guys. Bye.